Episode 12. One is all. All is one. Nice. I hope we get to explore this idea more. Oh, is that their father? He looks nice. It'd be nice if teacher wasn't home. <laughs> You've grown up a little, huh? Oh, nice. He's the first person to ever say anything positive about Ed's height. You probably don't recognize me, but it's Alphonse. How do you break this to him? No one's patted my head like this since back before I lost my body. Aw. I'll be right there. I'm feeling a little better today. That's not a good sign. I guess she hasn't gotten any better since last time. Hmm. <laughs> Welcome. Hello, my stupid pupil. I hear you've become one of the military's dogs! Teacher, you see, it's because I'm... Uh... Al? Look at you, you've gotten so big! It's really good to see you! Wasting no time, I see. The training has already begun. Your skills are rusty. How's she gonna feel when she figures out they broke the rules? That they tried human transmutation? I mean, she may already know just by looking at them, right? You've got lots of energy for someone who's not feeling well. Not feeling well?! What are you talking about?! I'm perfectly... <laughs> wow. There was that one alchemist. I thought that one man from Central knew a good amount about the stone. <gasps> so who was this guy? Ah, uh, Hohenheim. Is that their father? It is. If it wasn't for him. Oh, you boys are up early. What are you doing out of bed? Heard the sound of our father abandoning us. All right, just trying to put two and two together here. The teacher just mentioned that he's knowledgeable about the Philosopher's Stone. It's interesting to think that now Ed and Al are on the same path he was. The fact that Ed and Al were children when this happened, and they're still carrying the same idea of why he left, and the fact that he's responsible for their mother's death, and that he abandoned them, I'm almost sure there's something more than that. And this mirror is a very common theme when it comes to parents and children. It's like, your little child brain like can't handle the complexities of life or you just haven't been exposed to enough yet. And so you internalize lessons from your parents in very black and white ways. But there's sort of a problem because then you grow up, but you don't refresh your ideas with your new, more complex understanding. So it's really easy to carry these sort of black and white visions of people into the future. And a common thing that happens again and again in life and shows is you grow up and you realize that you yourself are doing things that are very similar. There's a sort of like karmic fate to it. And here is Ed pursuing the same thing relentlessly that his father seems to have been pursuing. So I feel like there's a lot more here and I feel like we're going to see this play out in an interesting way. But I don't know what he means by it's his fault our mother is dead. There might be something more to that. Hey, why isn't dad here? Your dad left. When's he coming back, mom? <laughs> Putting on a bright face for the kids. <laughs> you silly boy. He'll be back before you know it, Al. Oh, it's really observant. Mom! happened to her. She didn't kill herself, did she? I don't know what to think about it. Their mom obviously put on a brave face for the kids, but it didn't seem to me like she was really upset about it, about the father leaving, or at least it seems like she understood to some level. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. There's a lot going on here. Ugh, and I didn't realize they found her body. That's awful. Did our dad say anything about the Philosopher's Stone? Something about a lifelong dream coming true. He seemed very happy when he said it. My father likes son. Now we're going to eat! There was this big storm and we couldn't get the mother to a doctor. I don't know, it's pretty generous to call what we did helping. <laughs> yeah, it was mostly Winry. Everyone's blessed when a baby's born, huh? Yes, that's right. Oh no, she can't have kids. She hasn't changed one bit in all this time. <laughs> They've done a great job so far making her presence really intimidating. I guess that's a thing she does. Hey, old lady, could you be our tea 
creature? I'm a little hard of hearing, you see, so I didn't quite catch that. Maybe you'd like to repeat yourselves. Uh, we'll try again. Please, please teach us, pretty lady. What about your parents? Um, ma'am, these little ones don't have any parents. I'm guessing that this couple is having problems with kids having kids. Seems like they're all a good match for each other. But also I think if you're someone who likes something and you're really good at something, you love it when people ask you to teach you. As someone who used to teach for a living, I can say that the feeling like you're helping others is one of the best feelings in the world. Depending on the thing, like you yourself have to have an interest in what you're doing. But it's a great feeling when people come to you earnestly and they really want to know something and you actually have the information that is useful to them. Part of that I think is that intellectual pursuits or any kind of pursuit really, any any discipline, it's kind of lonely or there's a loneliness to it. Because if you get really good at something, you, you get to this point where you've sort of surpassed the general knowledge level of that thing. You've also reached a point at which you talking about that thing is boring to most people. So when people come to you and they actually are interested in it, it's like a chance to just like let loose all these thoughts and feelings you have about whatever the thing is. And also it really is true what they say, like you don't know something until you teach it. And so you end up getting a really robust understanding by helping other people doing things. So like it seems like they're a gift for each other. You know, it's not like just the teacher is taking pity on them. It seems like they came along at a time in her life when she needed them maybe. You two are on your own. <laughs> this is your introductory training. If you do well, you'll move on to the main training phase. Why is it so harsh? It's like especially harsh for them because they are on their own. You don't gotta rub it in. <laughs> One is all. And all is one. You have one month to figure out what that means. You'd better find the answer in the allotted time. If not, you're headed back to Risenborg! Cool, that means I have one episode to figure out what it means. How is a Kevin Chip considered alchemy training? Oh. I'm really happy we get to spend this much time with young Al. He's so cute. Sig Curtis and Izumi Curtis. Full Metal Alchemy. Supposed to eat it. It's so cute. Yeah. Kill it. Good luck. The kitchen room is more my area. You always make me do the dirty work. Huh? Oops. Box cups, look. Maybe we should just switch to fish. Yeah, fish are less cute. Think harder, Homer. Do what you have to, I guess. I'm still alive. I'm alive because I ate the ants. I'm alive because I consumed life. All is one and one is all. We're not going to die. Hmm. Ah! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, they just killed the whole forest? Just like that? They got extra now. Do you remember when I was weak from hunger and I ate those ants? You ate a lot of them. <laughs> I sure did. You're talking about the food chain, right? It's the entire world. The entire universe, even. Only one small part within the much greater flow. But by putting all those ones together, you get one great all, just like teacher said. The flow of this universe follows laws of such magnitude that you and I can't even imagine them. Whoa. <laughs> that was beautiful. I sort of made the same mistake Al did. I was thinking like, okay, yeah, the cycle of life, right? But that was expressed very eloquently. Long talk incoming. <laughs> So this is an idea I've heard about for a very long time, and I used to hate it. Part of the reason is, as many of you who have been following the channel for a while will know, I was once part of a spiritual community that had a guru. One thing that people in that community, or you know, people who are just spiritual in general, will talk about often is how like we're all beings of light, and how we're all like energy, and we're all connected, and all these things. And for me, as someone who's sort of ultra rational, my thought was not even that it was wrong, but it's sort of like so what? Because my experience as a human being is I'm here on Earth, and I have to live as a human. But over time, I sort of just through my own thing. I've sort of come 
to the same realization in a way that for me is is more personally meaningful. And the utility of it, and also the beauty of, of this, is the idea that existence itself sort of contains its own, own meaning that's there for us to take. At some point, for reasons we may never understand, existence came into being, or existence somehow has always been, right? And whether or not we can truly understand or observe the objective form of reality, there is not nothing, right? There's something. And there seem to be certain rules to the process, even if we're not fully aware of what those rules are. And once you have rules and you have things to apply the rules to, there's sort of a motion that begins. And it's the motion of the universe and things that on the surface level seem chaotic, to me actually seem quite structured. It's like the universe looking for something, sort of. And to say the universe is looking for something is sort of a loaded thing to say, because I don't think it actually has an end goal. It just has a process as a goal. And the process process is stuff happens and let's see what works and what doesn't work and so things come into existence and things fade from existence etc etc but it sort of branches out into creation and one of the creations of this process is humanity and so whether or not humanity is cosmically important ultimately or to some final goal humanity is important as sort of a, a limb on the tree or a branch of the tree because it's part of that system of experimentation and creation and even if humanity amounts to nothing cosmically it's still something because it was like a test you know it's like the universe trying something new and also getting feedback from that and the feedback will be what works and what doesn't work and whatever comes after humanity or maybe humanity will just end and that's also useful feedback in some way and so for me it's infinitely beautiful to at least just to be a part of that whether or not i actually am like a solid entity or whether or not i'm just a collection of cells that gives it gives an illusion to a consciousness or whatever, it doesn't matter because I still get to experience the fact that I'm part of this beautiful chain and I will forever have been part of this beautiful chain. And it's for me, it's more than a thought. It's like, it gives me a mission because it's like, how can I be the best part of the chain I can be? You know, how can I be the best human I can be? And I feel like that is cosmically important, at least in some tiny, tiny sub microscopic universal level. And it fills me with this feeling of gratitude and also warmth towards the way things are. You know, it's really easy to be nihilistic and think like, we live in this cold universe that doesn't care about us. And I think there is some truth to that as well, but there's like a glimmer of warmth in it. You know, there's a, there's a spark of beauty in it, which is that we're part of this such, such incredible system. At least for me, it, it inspires me to try to be as, as good as I can be. Does that make sense? I feel like hearing this, it might sound like there's a lot of gaps in the in my thinking and part of it is me sort of just taking emotional utility where i can find it you know but i really think that there are really nice beautiful ideas to explore in this idea of the interconnectedness of all things that actually can bring practical benefit and are really useful to think about and it's also made me a lot more tolerant of spiritual and religious practices because whether or not i agree with the fundamentals of any any of them i think somewhere inside of them and somewhere inside of them all is the belief in connectedness in like the connectedness of us to something greater than ourselves that is important you know, I guess that's it. <laughs> Long rant over. All is the world. And one is me. <laughs> Very well. Now the real training starts. That was easy. <laughs> now it's about to get hard though. The basis of transmutation is the power of the circle, which denotes the circulation of power. <laughs> Cool. Also, the circulation of power. <laughs> it's best if you experience it for yourself. <laughs> Teacher, you just put your palms together to perform transmutations, don't you? That's an advanced lesson. Perhaps it's something you learn when you see the truth. <laughs> Our teacher has seen the truth too. Right. What's the deal with her? What happened? You can transmute without a matrix. Oh, she was testing him. That was good. Al is now a suit of armor. Yeah, she figured and it two out. Two of your limbs are made from auto mail. Teacher, you, you saw it too. Could you tell me? No. Her child? Told you sooner. It must have been awful. It hasn't been that big a deal, actually. Besides, now I've got this long list of things I get to look forward to eating when I have my body back. I'm thankful for the levity from Al. It's amazing that they both had that same experience. It must be great for Ed, because at least he has someone to share it with. Someone else who knows. You darling little idiots. <laughs> it's okay to hurt. <laughs> That's 
It's gonna be a huge relief after all this time. We're so sorry, teacher. Please forgive us. We're so sorry. Please forgive us. We're so sorry. Wow. She can give them more than forgiveness. She can give them understanding. Because she's been there too. I feel like however good their bond was before, that just amplified it by a great deal. Because they both have a shared experience that like nobody else has. Or maybe very few people have. And also, even though, you know, they can never replace their mom and, and she can never replace her child, they sort of have elements of that role together. Right? Like she's a mother, more than a mother figure to them. And they're in some ways like her children, like some people she has to take care of and nurture. So it's a really, really beautiful scene. You have to understand that flow. Deconstruct it and then reconstruct it. That's what alchemy is, brother. It's also what living is. Alchemy is part of that flow. And the flow is life itself. Whoa. You can't really ask for much more than that. <laughs> From anything. You have this incredible look at the universe and, like, living. That was one of the most beautiful summaries, and also, I think, one of the most intelligent depictions of that I've ever seen. Maybe the only depiction of it I've ever seen, for that matter. I really am pleased by the fact that he talked about the universe having laws of such great magnitude we can't understand them. That's an idea that really resonates with me strongly. And the fact that we are small but connected, you know, they're, they're things of such beauty, and also I feel of practical importance as a human being living looking for meaning. Because it is those laws, even if they're unseen, that led to our creation. And it's almost like the fact that we have consciousness even is sort of just an offshoot of the fact that the universe has a consciousness. It's not in the way we think of it, but there is a process to it. There is something that sort of holds everything together. And so in some odd way, and this is sort of departing a little bit from what they're saying, like our consciousness is an offshoot of universal consciousness. And so just a fun way of thinking about it is like we are the universe looking at itself but as Ed sort of implied it leads to questions like if this is life if life does fit into this big big picture it's like how do you live how do you most intertwine with cosmic law and I think even if that's sort of a mystery or even if it's really really hard to get at what that is or maybe impossible to get at what it is just having the thought that it's connected imbues life with some form of meaning because it's not just random anymore it's something of great importance even if humanity itself is not super important in the in the scope of things it is important just because it's a part of all things and i have a really strong feeling that i can't really prove it's just like on a gut level that actually human morality is tied to universal law at least on some level and i think that one of the major goals of humanity so far in, you know especially as we see it in a lot of faith is to get at that answer and i'm sort of convinced even without proof that all of these separate elements like religion spirituality faith logic all of it is sort of dancing around each other but connected by a common thread that we are slowly getting at or perhaps we already have gotten at but it's just hard to hold you know in one brain for an extended period of time a lot of elements of life and society are forms of seeking truth that can be applied to life while being harmonious with the way things have been set up for us by universe and these giant universal laws that we can't understand i know this is really far out there but it's sort of hard to go over these ideas in any depth for these videos just because I'm sort of limited by like time and format and stuff like that, but very interesting stuff. For me, like this kind of thing is all I could ever ask for. It's like, I want to be able to think like this. I want to be able to connect with this. It's very exciting that the creator and writer or however many people were involved with the making of the show set to take on the ambitious task of actually presenting these ideas because they're so rare. It's hard to find anything about this kind of thought in a way that's explored with nuance and subtlety instead of just like dogma, you know? But anyway, that's the end of episode nine. What an episode that was. I'll see you soon for episode 10, which I hope was one tenth as amazing as this episode was.